So, a couple of things I want you to remember before we go outside. Let me talk first about just the structure of the bird, or the skeletal structure of the bird. Okay? Remember that the, make a note somewhere on your page there, the head will tell you everything. Alright? The head of a chicken will tell you everything. So, if I'm talking about a, uh, a Plymouth Rock, or a New Hampshire, or a Delaware, or a Dominique, or an Australor, all those breeds, uh, the wider the head, almost guaranteed, the wider the head, the wider the body of the bird. Okay? So when we talk, and I'll show you some birds out here, we're talking about a chicken having a crow head. Alright? What I'm referring to is a crow that flies around, that head that's long and narrow and pointed. Okay? And we call that a crow head. And when it comes to assessing breeding flocks or even production, okay, the bird that has a wider head is going to have wider body. She's probably going to be, he and she are going to be better producers. Okay, so the skull of a chicken tells you everything. The narrow the head means smaller the brain. Okay? Uh, the head houses the nervous system. Those are some, you know, um, and, and typically if you've got a wide skull, uh, you're going to, actually I can almost bring that picture back up on, uh, on the screen, but this bird that's on that card that you have, if you look, it's not a super good shot of her head, but she's a Cornish, is going to have a wide skull, a good one, and she'll be broad across the shoulders. Now the reason for a dual purpose chicken or a meat chicken that you want broad head and broad across the shoulders, anybody can ask why, why would that be important? <coughs> More meat and better uh, presentation of the carcass when it comes to the table, whether it's your table of your own birds or you're you know, providing that for the consumer. Okay? So when that bird is broad across the back, you turn it over, it's also going to have some broadness across the breast, the front of the bird. Uh, okay? So you want to remember that about the head. Uh, I'm going to show you when we go outside um, uh, what we call the heart girth. Okay, the heart girth is just right between, I'll go down between the wings, and it's the width of the body right between uh, uh, the, the, the two wings. It's a little hard, hard to explain versus going out there doing it, okay? But the heart girth is very, very important, on, and that's all part of the width of the bird. Um, I'm going to skip some of these other things. You can take some notes out there, but flatness of the back, okay, that's all connected to that width, all right? A bird... A bird that's narrow uh, is going to be, um, you know, when she's narrow in the head, narrow in the body, she's going to be narrow also in her carcass. It's also going to mean, remember earlier today I was talking about those light horns, you have a lot of in the back end, all right? When she's narrow, that also gives her a smaller area to be in less space for her to produce that egg. Okay? So just some things I kind of want you to... <coughs> kind of keep in your mind um, when we go out to handle the birds. Um, as far as egg production, uh, remember that uh, it, it's basically putting in one sentence what I was showing you earlier with the pictures, the body width behind the thighs is very important on that egg, that egg producer. Body width behind the thighs is very important for egg production. I don't care what breed of chicken it is, all right, except for the silky. But I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right. Okay. Another thing we're going to do when we get out with the birds is uh, we're going to talk about uh, the vent. All right. Somebody give me any idea what the vent might be. Yeah, I'm not sure who came up with that word, but it's kind of the rear end the, where the egg comes out. Okay, it's not like they have vents in the top of their head or anything like that. Okay, the vent, a couple of things you want to remember. You write this down because some of you might not take your pads out there. If a hen is in production, okay, her vent will be, uh, it'll be opened up, okay, and it'll be moist. It's real easy. If she's not laying, it'll be closed and it'll be dry. Okay? Uh, back at the vent is what we call the pubic, uh, the, the pelvic bones. Those pelvic bones, uh, I'm going to use my fingers to illustrate. When she is, the, right, the vent is right here in the middle of my two fingers. 
Okay? When she's in production, these pelvic bones will begin to spread apart. Doesn't take much of a rocket scientist to figure that out. That's where the egg comes out. We want those bones. When she's not laying, they'll be together. And when she stops laying, they'll go back together. So you can go out, for all of you who want to handle a chicken today, you'll be able to pick that bird up, feel around the vent, find those two bones, and determine, why are you making that face? You don't want to feel around the vent. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of backyard poultry workshop. <laughs> I love that face. That was great. And when you can turn around to the camera, you got to <laughs> Okay, so, uh, yes. How far apart is close and how far apart is open for them? Actually, a good egg producer, uh, most all the dual purpose breeds that you raise in your backyard, when she's in good production, three fingers should wow. sit between those two bones. When she's not in production or when she is? When, she when is she's in production. Oh. Okay? And if she's not in production and those bones are together, if that happens in January and then in March, and in May, and then again in September, and around Christmas time, she's in retirement. She appreciates all the money that you spend on food, and she's giving you nothing in return. Okay? So now, just a little breeding piece. The male chicken of every breed, all right? If his the he actually has the most influence on producing girls that lay eggs. Okay, and when his uh, when his pelvic bones are, you know, they'll naturally be together. They didn't lay an egg. But if they're curved in, the very tips, as brilliant Don Schreider taught me this, that when those are, are turned in, uh, there's a good chance he's going to produce girls that aren't good egg producers. Because as those bones are, or those pelvic bones are turned in, what happens is there might be some egg effort, but it's really hard and it's painful for that bird. She's like, eh, not think I'm going to do this. Okay? <laughs> And she goes into the low production classification. Okay, so um, those are just some things that I was thinking about as far as being able to tell if your bird is in production. Any questions about that? Yes. Or if you want, you want to add something? Oh, go ahead. Stand up. Sure, no, you stand up. Tell them how to hold the chicken before we get out there. If someone hands you a chicken, they should be facing you, go underneath the bird and grab their feet like this. Like where? Like we can't see it. it. Sorry. I'm not tall enough to. Well, she's giving you an illustration, then we'll take it outside and do it. Yeah, but we can't see her. A bird, when someone hands you a bird straight away like this, it will be coming toward you face first. Reach under the bird and just slip your fingers between his legs between your fingers like this and hold the bird his legs down. You can cuddle the bird this way or this way. Just, you can control the bird by keeping his feet from flapping about or you can put your hands on their wings if they're flapping around. The bird then, uh, you, can, you can turn it around if you want the other direction if you're examining it, but control the feet and it'll be very comfortable for the bird and for you to examine it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Other questions? And yeah, we're getting ready to go out here in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that the perfect hen would be big headed, big breasted, big butted? <laughs> <laughs> Big eaters and they're overweight, and that's a you know that's down there. We have to. How do you tell? Oh, I, I um, it, it does. Um, let let me tell you this. It's kind of a connected to what Harvey was saying with with what a chicken tells you. Your eyes are your best management tool. Period. Your eyes are your best management tool, and so you know hens that are if you watch your flock and spend time with them, okay. Hens that are. Um, Staying in the coop, 
late in the morning, they don't get up with everybody else. One's that, one's that, I'm serious. I'm so serious. Uh, ones that, that go into the coop early, you know, they're not very strong foragers, they're not that active, they spend a lot of time eating, you kind of watch them, they're just like, yay, you know, it's just kind of like, you know. Um, so, the big good carpenters and plumbers. We are. So, is that kind of, is that so helpful? Okay. Yeah. So, the fried chicken that you, um, it's not laying anymore, and, um, Maybe she needs to butcher it somehow or whatever. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean still edible? You've had a couple years? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So the big word, the big word that you just that we use is called culling. Okay? This is getting rid of that bird that is done producing. Now, what you do with that is gonna vary to, from every person in this room. Okay? Some of you will say, I will never, you know kill a chicken on my property. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that core value. They're my chicks and they're my girls. And But you still have to call. So whether you let that bird go to old age and die, that's an option. Whether you call Gary and say, Gary, you're the coalition president and you need to come to my house and help me figure out what to do with the chicken. So you, so you can call an outside resource. Pot, you know? You could, you could butcher that bird. And, and cook it and or freeze it, process it. So they're more like soup material at that stage? They've been around yeah. and made just for yeah. they're not they're them, just grown up for meat. No, they're definitely, you got to cook it differently. Just, yeah. my wife always reminds me, low and slow on an old bird. Okay? <laughs> low and slow on those older birds. That's it. It's a real... Absolutely. Especially the fat, the fat thing, the fat <laughs> Yeah. How long do they stay in retirement? Is that your question? Well, she, they, where's Pat? How long have you seen a, one of your pet chickens live? How long have you seen a uh, pet chicken live, like if it's in your backyard, old age? <laughs> you determine whether that's retirement or not. Well, I can't wait to get Pat up front after that. Okay, yeah. Can you still use the chickens to help till your garden? It all comes back to your eyes, your best management tool. If she's a, some of them, when they're done, they're, you know, they're done. And they're just... Um, they don't do much, so, so you'll be able to tell us. Okay, one other, I saw, yeah. If you're able to choose the, the so-called parents, yep. then does that mean that you, you have a better success to have good layers, or, or is it kind of a... Absolutely, it's called the lost art of selecting. Remember that. Okay, your parents have everything to do with what kind of bird you're going to produce. I mean, it's, and, and so even though the, the laziness, the lack of production, or the good production, all is determined by selecting good breeders to produce your progeny that produces. All right? Did you say amen to that? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this little arrogant blue chicken running around here, you've been watching me chase him. Hey, Rocco. That guy, he probably knew 20 little hens. You know, he's all chasing the big buckeye male out there. But generally speaking, you know, if you get a good vigor, good healthy male, he can do, um, he can do up 25 hens. How many males can you have? Oh, oh, you can have. Well, yeah. I mean, the key is males that grow up together. Your eyes, your best management tool. So watch them. The boys that grow up together, generally, they can. Do okay together. Yeah. Now, if you take a chicken from your house and a chicken from his house and bring them together and never see each other, disaster. Yeah. But and and uh, you know, generally, I wouldn't have. You know, you don't want to do like five males and two hens, just in case. You do that. Okay. So, but a hen for every, or a male. If you're gonna have multiple males in the flock, I'd say depending on how aggressive they are, but like one rooster to every seven to ten hens at the most. Most of the males. Yeah. Uh, good breeder males, 
They do their job, so you don't need a, a bunch of them. All right. You don't need a rooster at all unless you want to have babies. Because uh, yeah? we don't want artificial sunlight. Right? Yes? Real quick. Yes. If you have a rooster with 10 hands, of all the eggs can be killed. Oh, yeah. If he's, yeah, absolutely. Your fertility should be right up. Okay, follow me. Come on out.